So the question is, should a seat on the Supreme Court remain empty during an election year? I guess that depends on who is in power. The Constitution is pretty clear about what is supposed to happen now. When there is a vacancy on the Supreme Court, the President of the United States is to nominate someone. The Senate is to consider that nomination and either they disapprove of that nominee or that nominee is elevated to the Supreme Court. Historically, this has not been viewed as a question. Uh, there's no unwritten law that says that it can only be done on off years. That's not in the constitutional text. I'm amused when I hear people who claim to be strict interpreters of the Constitution suddenly reading into it a whole series of provisions that are not there. So let me set the record straight, as they say. I said, and I quote, if the president consults and cooperates with the Senate or moderates his selections, then his nominees may enjoy my support, as did Justice Kennedy and Justice Souter. End of quote. I made it absolutely clear that I would go forward with the confirmation progress process as chairman, even a few months before presidential election. If the nominee were chosen with the advice and not merely the consent of the Senate, <clears throat> just as the Constitution requires. To jam this nomination through the Senate is just an exercise in raw political power. And even if Trump, even if President Trump wants to put forward a name now, the Senate should not act until after the American people select their next president, their next Congress, their next Senate. Um, what we're seeing here, and, and I hope this is temporary, is a disrespect for the Constitution by the Senate Republicans. The American people expect Judge Garland, the president's nominee, to be given a fair hearing and a timely vote in the Senate. The Senate should do their job. I remind that three, uh, six justices have been confirmed in the, in the presidential year, three of them, one Kennedy, one Cardoza, one Brandeis. What can you do then? Some have mentioned the possibility, if they try to push through a nominee in a lame duck session, that, that you and the, the House could move to impeach President, President Trump or Attorney General Barr as a way of stalling and preventing the Senate from acting on this nomination. Good morning, Sunday morning. The, uh, the, the, we have a responsibility. We take an oath to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States. We have a responsibility to meet the needs of the American people. Uh, that uh, is a uh, uh, when we weigh the equities, uh, protecting our democracy requires us to use every arrow in our quiver. And just this morning, we received a reminder of why it's important to have a full court. A deadlocked 4-4 four four decision upheld a lower court decision, preventing two women from suing a bank for discrimination. So many things will be put on hold when there are 4-4 four four decisions. And it's going to hurt progress in America, whether it's economic or social justice in any way. Listen to some of these numbers. Over 1.5 million Americans have signed petitions urging Republican senators to do their job. 300 editorials have been written in papers across the country criticizing the Republican position, including some very conservative papers. Over 350 law professors and legal scholars have signed letters urging the Republican leadership to do their job. In the week after Justice Scalia's unfortunate passing, you had 54 percent saying the Senate should act. Then a week later, it ticked up to 62 percent in a Fox poll. A week after that, 70 percent of voters in battleground states said the Senate should do its job and vote on a nominee. Seven in ten said the Senate should hold hearings. Momentum is on the side of having hearings and of having a vote, and it's growing. If you care about these things and the kind of country we live in, 
this election and this vacancy mean everything. And by all rights, by every modicum of decency and honor, Leader McConnell and the Republican Senate majority have no right to fill it. No right. In the final few weeks, sensing her failing health, Justice Ginsburg told her family that it was her, quote, most fervent wish that she not be replaced until a new president is installed. That was Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg's dying wish, her most fervent wish, that she should not be replaced until a new president is installed. I think the, yes, the fourth row, please and again state your name and ask the question. Hello, my name is Sarah Berkey, and I was wondering if you thought there were any valid constitutional arguments that would prevent uh, President Obama from filling Justice Scalia's seat on the Supreme Court. I hope that's not too political, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> as you know, the President has the authority to name appointees to the Supreme Court, but he has to do so with the advice and consent of the Senate. Uh, and if the, Sen the Senate doesn't act, as its current Senate is not acting, um, what, can be, what can be done about it? I mean, it's not, even, even, even if you could conceive of a testing lawsuit, what would the response be? Well, you want us to vote, so we'll vote no. So, <laughs> but I, I do think that cooler heads will prevail, I hope sooner rather than later. The president is elected for four years, not three years, so the power that he has in year three continues into year four and maybe some members of the Senate will, will wake up and appreciate that that's how it should be.